This set could have been the good, the bad, and the ugly by Sergio Leone, but it is Magic's take. And judging from the other sets releasing this year, we think that Modern Horizons 3 is going to take the spot as the good set this year. That means that Outlaws of Thunder Junction might just end up being the bad and the ugly. Let's get into it. Let's try to focus on the bright points first, because there's a lot of bad things to be said about this set. But let's focus on the good stuff. I think it's nice to see that Magic is trying out new stuff. They are re really exploring the settings, they're exploring new realms, they're exploring new planes, and they're having a lot of fun and there's a lot of creative energy being released. Magic is also doing a lot of new takes on beloved characters. And for new players coming to Magic who do not have the backstory and the lore connected to the game the way older players might have, these ways to experience new characters are simply the characters themselves. So for new players, these characters might just be really cool. Magic the Gathering is doing a lot of creative takes like Jens just talked about, and in Outlaws of Thunder Junction we're seeing a lot of well-known characters change so they fit sort of the vibe of the set a lot better. We're seeing Tiny Bones, Raska, Ragdolls, and a lot of other well-known characters, but this time around into this spaghetti western setting and they slap some cowboy hats on them and they've changed up the looks and the appearances to fit this set. A quick question for you, are you enjoying seeing these well-known characters in completely new settings and in new ways and new styles that we're not used to? So let us know down below in the comment section what you think about this revamp of all these well-known characters. The general idea behind the set is that the outlaws Rakdos, Raska, Oko, Tiny Bones and Annie Flash have banded together and now they have become a force to be reckoned with. This band of outlaws is making life really unsafe in Thunder Junction. And on top of all these beloved outlaw characters, the set also has a special reprint insert, much like the Enchanting Tales from The Wilds of Dream. And these cards are called Breaking News. And we have seen Thoughtseize among some of these cards. So these inserts might just be really powerful. All in all, the set looks creative, it looks fun in a kind of childish way, and we still don't like it. So now we're going to come to the bad part of this set. One of the things that I'm not really loving for Outlaws of Thunder Junction is the fact that there was supposed to be an aftermath like set after Outlaws of Thunder Junction, but they saw that aftermath really tanked hard, so they decided to scrap it. And instead they put all of these different cards, variations and slots back into Thunder Junction and really just smush them all in there. So there's not only going to be breaking news, there's also going to be the big score, there's going to be special guests, and in total I think there's going to be six different slots all mushed up into Outlaws of Thunder Junction alongside the entire regular set, which also comes in a variation of many, many treatments. It's just too much for one product. Do we really need so many variants and do we really need so many different slots in a standard set? Well, you can be the judge of that. Leave a comment down below. If you're enjoying this video, please hit that like button and consider becoming a subscriber. We would really appreciate it. Thank you. In our video talking about all the sets releasing in 2024, we said that we had a really hard time seeing Outlaws at Thunder Junction as a set that would come well together. And now having seen even more of the art from the set, that is still the overall impression. Right now, this set feels like the creative department in Magic Gathering got free hands to do kind of what they wanted and they came up with the idea to do a western set. But unfortunately, this western set is doing all the kind of stereotypical tropes about the wild wild west and suddenly everybody with a six shooter and a cowboy hat is a desperado and a cowboy and it just doesn't fit really well. This is not a plane that you actually kind of believe in as an actual place in the magic law and the magic system. This set feels really much like it is sort of a western set from outside that has been interpreted into magic gathering and is simply using magic's rules and characters to do its own thing. It does not feel like a genuine magic product. So in spite of all this creativity and in spite of the fact that some of the art does look cool and flavorful, it also just does look a little too maybe bright and colorful. I personally would have preferred to see a more like dark, uh, slightly 
utopian version of a Western world. You know, this is really supposed to be the plane where only the villains is hanging out or hanging out. Um, and do we really want that to look happy and fun? I'm not sure. I don't think it really fits with the vibe of it. So much like the streets of Copacabana and also maybe murders at Carlos Manor, this is just a themed set and the theme isn't really on point and that's why these sets aren't doing that well because it really was supposed to be the theme that brought it home and you know connected everything and made it a fun and exciting experience and from what we've seen with Streets and also what we're seeing right now with Murders of Cal of Mana, this is maybe not the right route to go for Magic the Gathering. It doesn't work and the players aren't really buying it. Will Outlaws of Thunder Junction along with Murders of Cal of Mana be our version, our era's version of Dragon's Maze and also Gate Crash. I think we might look back at it and see that this was not the right route for Magic the Gathering. Uh, you can definitely try and be creative, but you need to keep it within the flavor or at least within something that the players really care about. And it seems that a spaghetti western with a cowboy hat slapped on Oko and Rakdos and Olivia Wildarin might not be the thing. All in all, this take on the Wild Wild West is simply not good enough. Had this been a school play, it might have been enough, but it is not a school play. It is a product released by a billion dollar company and they simply need to do better. And with that, we want to thank you watching this video and all of our patrons and YouTube channel members for supporting us. It makes all the difference to us and we really appreciate all of you guys out there. We will see you in the next video.